Hello, welcome to the Gunner Heat PC developer stream for April 2023. That's a pretty special month because traditionally we do an April Fool's update, and this year was no exception. You guys might already know, bad sound, really. Don't, let's not start with this again. You sound fine to me. Okay. You guys let me know if there's bad sound. Well, he's coming up with a different audio thing for us, so... Yes, true. It's possible that it's louder than the other guys? Am I louder than the People other are guys? Fine. People are saying it's fine. Let's just mm. roll. Someone said I look cute, so I'll take that as good sound. All right, moving on. Uh, yeah, month of April is usually uh, an April Fool's update for us. This is, I think, the third year in a row that we've done that. It's the first time on Steam, which is cool. Uh, so we did something a little ambitious this time. We added, what was it, at least three new features at once, or the preliminary testing versions of them. We have BMP2, we have Cobra Helicopter, we have working close air support. Uh, I think it's Phantom and MiG-23 in the missions. And they have some dumb bombs. And then there were a couple other goodies like the, uh, the instant feedback cheat, which I'm sure I'll show. So yeah, there's a, there's a bit going on. I hope- Who do you uh, have joining us today? Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. I am joined by Kavi our hey. technical lead, and Harry, our art lead. Hello. He is here. Harry hasn't been on one of these streams in a while, but uh, it's cool to have him join us today. It's such a treat to have you on, Harry. It's daylight savings, man. Yep. I'm just going to say it's some kind of Australian magic and not believe it. Magic from the Southern Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everything's all upside down over there. All right, I'm gonna start Not the, the game. Not the whole gang. We're missing Baird, actually. But we are missing yes. Trucker Baird. Uh, Kevin, it, oh, uh, I think my stream's lagging a bit. Oh, there we go. Kevin is our uh, environment lead and mission designer, so he's the fourth member of the Radiant team. And he did an exceptional uh, amount of work this time around. New missions are really fun. Yeah, they are. We uh, had to forego a little bit of our usual testing cycle because of trying to keep spoilers secret, and it was a little a little hurried at the end there, so a couple of things snuck through. I'm sure we'll do a hotfix soon enough. Um, if you guys have any uh, crash logs or anything like that, as usual, submit them on the Discord, or if it's uh, consistently reproducible, there's a GitHub page linked in the help section of the game. Speaking of the game, let's do some gameplay. Not trying to sound urgent, any ballpark idea of when we could expect multiplayer? That sounds too urgent. Three weeks. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> and Harry's not technical in any regard, so that doesn't work. It's gonna be, it's gonna be three weeks. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first. Uh, just as a rule of thumb, we don't answer when questions pretty much ever, because we don't want to be wrong and we don't want to put pressure on ourselves. So, we. When's the next? When's the next time you're eating? Oh man, let me let me tell you. Wait a minute. <laughs> nice try. I think um, I think we'll we'll. Name a date if it's like a like a week out because we yeah. know we're gonna deliver then. Oh like, yeah. We don't we don't want to disappoint anyone with delays or whatever. If it's a sure thing, we'll do it. Other than that, no. Yep. Cobra will not be flyable. No. At least not in this game. Mmm. Yeah, Cobra has had some extensive AI work done in the last month to make it work as it is and we're quite happy with that i think on the stream i should pronounce it cobra just to upset people 
Is that Barbara. the Australian way? That's the Huey Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> Will there ever be a Sheridan? If no. <laughs> ah. Ah. We, I should mention we also don't answer vehicle questions. <laughs> if you're wondering if something will be in the game, uh, first check if it was in uh, US, USSR, or East or West Germany in 1985 in the central region. And if it wasn't, then you know the answer is not yes for a very long time if we ever add a theater that includes it. Who are those people talking? Uh, these are the dudes that are in my crew right now. Because we have East German crew voices, a preliminary ver preliminary version of them. They don't have their complete uh, command flow yet. They have uh, a very cut down version. It doesn't have like the range or the uh, firing method instruction, but uh, it's got some stuff. Why do they ask you to use AP for everything? Uh, well, currently, there's, if you must know, there's an issue with the ammo selection. So they'll never ask for AG in the uh, prompt in the BMP. Either way, you're gonna kill something. Yeah. I think they also had a different word for autocannon, which we don't have in this command flow yet, but all in time. That's why we said preliminary. I'm decided what we're gonna do with the, with the cannon, but uh, it's gonna take some research. With getting in touch with a BMP2 crew who served with NVA is very, like, impossible to you, because they barely had any of the finding people we were talking about. We've got T-55 crews, we haven't found a T-62 crew yet, we've found plenty of infantry and engineers and stuff. When you find those people who are willing to talk, do you try and set them up with like a, a, like a research group or something and say, hey, here's some basic questions just to make sure they know their stuff, or...? Uh... It's usually pretty obvious. Uh, mm. The NVA guys are a lot less interested in talking about it. I don't know. Some of them, some of them still have a bit of a like. I don't know. I asked the wrong way one time and pissed them off. Or I don't know. They're, they're Didn't they think you were like, like a West German? <laughs> yeah, they thought I was West German because I was asking them to compare their command flow with the West Germans, and they were like, "Oh, this West German guy." Can uh, chat's saying you're quiet, Harry. Let me see if I can boost you. Can you hear me now? Oh, nope. shit. <laughs> well. Uh, the, it should be, it should be noted that the actual, the workflow of the crew is not, uh, right for now, for the Germans. Like, it's, it's basically the... A slightly tweaked American workflow, but it's they spoke and dealt with targets fairly differently to the Americans, and um, we'll get that in. Yeah. There's more um, code work that needs to be done to properly support their command flow, because the U.S. voice controller doesn't have uh, direction and distance callouts. It doesn't have the uh, like fire from short halt kind of commands. So we would need a little more time to put those uh, those modules into it. And obviously we were splitting our time between several other features, so not in yet. Does the, does the Conkers work at the moment? It well, does. I think it does. Oh, it sure does. I will show it when the uh, situation calls for it. Whoa, what is that guy doing? I noticed, um, you kill the gunner and they keep driving forward in this mission. Damn, they're, they're really trying to party. The, uh, the trucks often don't stop when the driver dies, too. So, you get these dead trucks just careening down the hill. Ghost trucks? Yeah. I've seen people shoot at them over and over again and be like, Wow, invincible truck! Meanwhile, the guy's like, uh, they're completely dead. Sonny the Swanky Beluga asks about the proper NVA workflow. It's fairly similar to the um, Eretzar 
that the Western Westoids do um, back then and now, with some things swapped around. I think I'm pr I don't actually know the history of it, but um, from what I can tell, it looks like they uh, both the Russians and both flavors of Germans inherited their procedure from uh, Germany in the Second World War, um, but with some changes. You did a lot of research into that, good job. Yeah, man. Bought so many books before finally found something with the actual information in it. Oh yeah, didn't we have a couple of false uh, leads too? Like we would find a book that looked like it was correct and then it would come in and it would be unrelated. Yeah. I remember having at least one like physical book like that. Yeah, there was also like one turned out to be like a, a scorecard for a shooting exercise and stuff like that. BMP has, I guess it's a recoilless rifle, yeah, I guess it, yeah, you could say that. It's basically a big ass RPG looking thing. What is the truck made of? The truck is made of steel and air. Polygons. Yeah. <laughs> the canvas actually doesn't even count for armor in the truck, you just phew, right through it. Um... Someone asks again about like a proper answer for multiplayer. I guess there's a chance that people haven't heard the word on this. It's a very, very, very complex task and it's going to take a long time. Yeah. There's a reason uh, it's at the end of the roadmap. Last, yeah. I gave him an answer. Same multiplayer person? will be ready when the forest crow flies west over the high moon. And you guys know what that is. Uh -huh. The numbers when you hit with the cheat on, what do they mean? Hold on, we, we haven't shown the cheat yet, just hold your horses. Wow, that's true. We did get a lot of requests to put this feature back in, and we thought, <laughs> you know what? That's a reasonable ask. Mm -hmm. We should listen to the community feedback. Alright, there's supposed to be a Bradley around here. I'm a little concerned that I haven't seen it yet because that means it will surprise me. It's supposed to be very evident. I'm sure it will make itself yep, known. Can we expect better impact effects on HE? No, they're already good. Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with the HE? You've killed the boss of the local party and his supplies. A new party's been we elected. We do have lines for Stopfen, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know if they're mixed in yet. Uh, yeah. Stopfen did not come up. Oh, okay. Or so, Einstellen, though, we do have lines for. Someone asked, uh, what was the reason for reducing smoke after a shot? There's not always a reason. Sometimes we just do revisions on things, and uh, they are what they are. So. Alright, uh, by the way, the music in the April Fool's missions is a new track by Majoris, who does the music for the game. Uh, it's very cool. Not sure if it'll make it in the regular rotation, I guess we'll see. Yeah, Brunus, I don't know what you mean by the next version. We patch every month. Rip Bradley. Will you enable point aim within the tank like you can do in third person? Just aim somewhere and barrel will follow? Absolutely not. That's uh, not compatible with fire control systems that require a smooth tracking rate for uh, doing automatic lead. For example, let's do an Abrams mission really quick. There are things that would just not work properly if you were, uh, if you had a turret that chases the mouse around, like in War Thunder. So we recommend uh, practicing 
and just getting used to the way the aim works. Yeah, we've got subtitles in this update, which should be very helpful for people who don't know tank command flow or don't have uh, English as a first language. Okay. You can't really see it with head-on targets, but I'm following the target with my uh, in my reticle, and the tank is aiming ahead of the reticle automatically. And getting a uh, smooth tracking rate on that would not be possible with mouse chasing aim, so that is the main reason we don't do that. Can't see that one. M163 and ZSU 23 for not soon, no. Ooh, interesting thing happened here, so I nope, oh, never mind. I got taken out. This guy Interesting thing ended. Yes, I was about to say my gunner started calling his own fire commands because the commander is dead, but uh then I got taken out, so When will the new version be available? Well, it is. Yep. Do you mean this version? It's out now, man. Yeah. It was out yesterday. Unless Technical. you're talking about the pirated one. I don't know how long that takes to come out. They have to uh, download it and re-upload it for you, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's their thing. We don't talk to them. We don't send them a new build either. Harry was the uploader the entire time. Ooh, I'm having a skill issue today. What's new? Hush. Just uh, so everyone knows, I know there's plenty of native German speakers in the stream. We didn't just like kind of make stuff up as uh, anglophones. We spoke to probably four or five different Germans. Some of them served, some of them did not. Um, and develop the script based on that. Uh, the order of the words is not correct as it, as it stands, but like, uh, we've gone on the advice of people who were tankers or otherwise in the military, so that's all we can really say about it, I suppose. If we've been told wrong, we've been told wrong. Yep, we did our best. I don't, uh, I don't think it's much possible to do more research than we did for German Command Flow. If you can find a documentation that says we're wrong, we'd like to see it. Yeah. Which is our standing policy. Why does your tank just automatically get taken out when your driver or gunner gets taken out? Can't you do exchanging? No, you cannot, currently. Uh, we don't have plans, as far as I know, to do the video game style like crew swap. Um, some vehicles have a commander override feature, which is not in yet, so in the Abrams, if you were to lose your gunner, the commander could theoretically uh, perform the gunnery after that, but other than that sort of thing, no, it's not really planned. In fact, we have a, a feature in most vehicles where if the vehicle starts getting Swiss cheesed and it's no longer combat effective, the crew just bail immediately. They don't try to ride it out. Will you implement some kind of sight vibration when shooting? Already there. Yeah. We're getting repeated questions about, as far as I can tell that question is, is there going to be armor degradation? The answer is not for the foreseeable future, I don't think. Yeah. Someone just said the words field repair and recovery with no question. Thank you for your vocabulary. I got this version actually. Why are you typing in all caps? <laughs> That's the previous okay. month as well. So yeah, download the new one. 
If your Steam hasn't automatically downloaded the new one yet, you should check your download settings. So this came out yesterday. Alright, we're gonna take the BMPs and go look for trouble. Is the BMP-2 going to be temporary for East Germany until USSR is added? Uh, it remains to be seen. We add things to instant action missions manually, and then the campaign has its own uh, logistics-based system for which vehicles are most prevalent. Uh, BMP-2 was exceedingly rare in NVA service. I think they had a few dozen of them, maybe, late in the Cold War. So... If it makes an appearance for East Germany, it'll probably be kind of a rare boy, but for USSR, it'll be slightly more common. Uh, Gaff the Red, we do have documentation on how the NVA did the command flow. We've got about three documents in all from, say, slightly different things. They come from different places. Yeah. We have documentation, we have people's testimony about it. Sometimes not everything matches up and we do our best to resolve it. Because it came up, and I will not ignore it, uh, is there a roadmap for development for the year or any priorities for new features? Even? There is a roadmap. It's at gunnerheatpc.com. You can also find a link to that through our Discord. It does not note priorities for the year itself, but it notes our overall priorities for features. Speaking of roadmap, we have a question about the roadmap from none other than Ligma. Oh yeah? What's Ligma asks, say about the roadmap? Ligma asks, can we talk about the roadmap and any surprises that came up along the way? Do you mean, uh, like, any difficulties we've run into or something else you cannot leak classified documents to help them. yeah we throw those out I'm pretty sure nothing in theater would be classified anyway so if you're sending us something that's classified it's probably irrelevant to the project yeah I think I got him. <laughs> well done. Oh man, the fire for when the chopper crashes, that's crazy. Yeah, our effects guy really went uh, hog wild this update. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Do you defeat the big cheese by letting it spoil? Yeah, <laughs> that's one way. You gotta be careful on conserving ammo, uh, conserving AP ammo especially in the BMP because you might notice on the HUD it says plus zero. There is no reserve ammo for this. And if I try to restock, nothing happens. In fact, Why I is that? Disable that. Uh, there's physically no more ammo in the vehicle. There are uh, ammo bins or belt feeds for AP and HE. They have predetermined amounts that are always the same. A uh, hundred something for AP and I think 340 for HE. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, just uh, BMP2 will always have that load up and you have no more ammo when you run out. And that's just how it is. Aircraft being damaged. You can't do that yet because we haven't let you. Um, how we're going to do that is something we're still figuring out. Yeah, ultimately. Not in, a, not in a technical sense, but more design sense. Yeah, because ultimately it's the uh, SPAA's job to protect you from CAS, right? So it's um, there's there should be a whole network of stuff that exists that's trying to find and take out planes while you do ground work. Bad things will be able to happen to the planes, just not right now. Yep. Also, it's as we... Race. Yeah, it is. Also, just like with any new 
feature that gets added, there's a bit of a, a push and pull or a cat and mouse game going on. You add one thing, then you add another thing that balances it out. We don't really do things for balance specifically, but the natural consequence of having an incomplete game is that as you add things, the picture slowly gets more complete. And right now it's imbalanced in that direction where there's uh, a lot of air threats and not a lot to counter them. It's also the reason we didn't put the BMP2 backported into the old missions that take a lot of testing to make sure it doesn't just completely break. Yeah. Uh, someone asked about physics updates. Um, that's like there was a quick thing we found we could optimize that might only help people with low-end systems. The, we're doing a bigger pass on physics that is going to probably, I don't know, for us at least it's improved performance a lot, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, that's still in progress though. Yep. <laughs> Do you see the cockpit bounce up there? That is good. It's not the reason for flying BMPs, we don't actually know what's caused that yet. Yeah, there was a, a couple of weird interactions between some of the changes we made um, when we do the hotfix. I'm sure that'll all get ironed out. Until then, enjoy the flying BMPs. What's that? Oh, that's dirt. Oh, that's M113s. Panzer Granate, I think rate of fire selection is probably likely eventually. Everyone's asked yeah. about that. We have to add some more uh, game mechanics to support that, or, or controls or whatever. But yeah, BMP should have a low fire rate and a high fire rate. Uh, obviously low fire rate's good for conserving ammo, and high fire rate's just for saturating something, or any aircraft. THC man, if you mean game playing tutorials for this game, I've made a few that might be helpful if you're talking about gunnery. Yeah, they're pinned on the Steam discussion page for the game. Also, the game itself has a how to play guide and gunnery guides linked on the website and also from the help button in the main menu. Uh, we've done tests for muddying tanks. Um, it's just such a cosmetic thing that it's sort of like it's not being rushed in any sense. Yeah. A lot of polished items are going to be more toward the end of the development cycle, I think. Most of our focus now is on adding big features or brand new stuff, and then uh, hardcore optimization or uh, polished passes will come a little later. To it's put that in context, what you're seeing in the game is trees and ground and buildings uh, sort of split between our terrain guys who are two in number and uh, we've got one guy that sometimes helps with like the hitbox models like the AAR stuff and the rest is me so if there's an art thing that's like taking too long that's why yeah we yeah. are we're always like oh we're a small team but it really is true it's uh, very small. the main team is four people, and then we have contractor help when we need it, which is most of the time. But still, it's uh, like one-off tasks and stuff. We have some uh, some frequent contributors, like our visual effects guy. He's very good. Oh yeah, true. Visual effects is a uh, its own person. That isn't an invitation to send uh, a bunch of uh, untextured Blender models to us and asking if they can help, by the way. <laughs> we want, if we're looking for anyone, a, a, a very good and experienced animator would be really nice. Um, and a very good and experienced tech artist, like shader artist, would be yes. really helpful. Indeed. We should do some more job postings. Yeah. We should, because we've got a few spots that we could have these for. I think we could get tank naming, like writing a custom name on the barrel. Uh, I doubt we'll ever have fully custom names, but we'll see what happens. 
Yeah. That could all change if you PayPal a thousand dollars to GHPC right now. No, no, don't, don't do that. We have some very generous people. Ooh, that guy got fucked up. At least I think I the BP dumps our exhaust out the vent. Can you show that? I still haven't seen it. Sure, let me deal with the part of yours first. The no party zone from Josh. You can kind of see it right above the spotlight there. There's a ventilation oh, going on. They're asking for a plain green M60. <laughs> Technically, it's green. Again. Wow, you should have played the game like six months ago. It would be, the, it'd be there. <laughs> when we had the green and everyone was asking for Murdoch and now the Murdoch's in everyone. Like, well, not everyone, but the first of, I'm sure, many are asking for green. Yeah. The, technically, it is still there, just like you said. It's uh, if we turned off the paint layer, it would be green. <laughs> God. Now it's gone. They miss it. Mm-hmm. Speaking Someone of, also asked just before for a bigger fire and smoke uh, plume, which is a very normal reaction to the biggest inferno yet in the game being added. <laughs> Can we have <laughs> I bigger? Think I think they're asking about the vehicle fires actually, because those, um, yeah. the distance that the smoke travels before it fades out got lowered a little bit. I think NOOP is getting ready for the, um, like the combined lingering smoke effect. Mm -hmm. The ones, uh, so the, the particle effect system is very detailed. Uh, the flammables and, uh, compartment analysis and everything when fire comes out of vehicles it has to be coming out of a real exit in the vehicle in ghpc so a hole that you shot or a vent or a hatch that's open stuff like that um the turret ring if there's no turret anymore uh and the system will create the correct effects for whatever gaps are allowing fire out um with that system we can't make each fire effect have like thick smoke that travels for miles because if you've shot 10 holes in a vehicle and there's three hatches open, you're going to have 13 smoke things overlapping. That would be horrible. So instead we have to make a system that kind of coalesces that smoke and, and does like one smoke column for the whole vehicle. Uh, and then we can further extend that smoke effect. So there's the long-winded technical answer for why the smoke stops so soon. Gas bomb's accurate. I just saw someone get wasted, almost direct hit with one before, so I think it varies a bit. It does vary a bit. You, uh, people have different results case by case. I found the cast bombs extremely accurate, annoyingly so. Uh, I basically spend the whole time advancing in mission four, just hoping that I don't get picked by the planes so that I can actually survive. <laughs> Let's turn on the the cheat, actually. Spam Mafia, the Challenger 2 uh, for 1985, they did not deploy that in 1985. They were holding it uh, for another like 13 years or however long it took for, um, for that to actually be in existence. Also, there's no British in our theater. Blessed. Sorry for saying the, the B word uncensored. <laughs> Come on, man. If I remember correctly, this is the hill holding mission. Are you gonna die on that hill? <laughs> I've done that many times, and I think I will try to avoid it. Mm. This is a good mission to demonstrate the survivability onion, the first step being don't be there. Let's give these guys a uh, conquerors. Reagan's already in the game, man. His entrepreneurial spirit is what drives you in your Abrams. Dragon D's nuts. Nothing. 
No flyable Cobra. It is not a helicopter game, it's a vehicle game. Ground vehicle, rather. Good catch. These are some good hit markers. Yep, so what you're seeing right now is uh, this is the instant damage cheat. This is the April Fool's, uh, one of the April Fool's features. Because we removed the red text that shows up when you uh, get a hit during missions, and we made it relegated to only the after action review, as you wouldn't really know what you did inside of a target with your shots, you just see it hit. Uh, we felt that the impact effects were good enough now that you can tell what's going on and uh, we don't need that debug text anymore. However, uh, a lot of people wanted it back. Uh, we don't want it back, but we decided it would be neat to make uh, an April Fool's cheat for it. So now there's this, uh, this hit marker and score system and the big red text. It's kind of fun. Also, if you get a, a really big hit where there's a lot of stuff damaged at once, there's an extra effect. I'll see if I can get that to show up. I've never heard of the game Steel Beasts. Is that like a zoo kind of management <laughs> game? Come on, man. Of course we've heard of Steel Beasts. We, um, we've acknowledged them on stream a few times as uh, being like... You know, a bit inspirational and stuff. And yeah, they're pretty polite to us as well. It's a cool Steel Beasts. Thing. Yeah, it, it's. I would say it's probably the pinnacle of tank sims. Uh, it'd be pretty hard to argue otherwise. As far as I mean, different people are looking for different things out of a tank game, but as far as actual deep system simulation and uh, tactical control stuff like that, things that they need for their training role, um, they they've knocked it out of the park for sure. Definitely. I will not say such things about some other tank games, but Steel Beast is cool in my book. <laughs> okay, so I've been alerted that they're coming to counterattack this position. I'm not going to stay here. I don't like the sight of the M60s coming over the hill. I would rather leave and uh, find another approach. Too many times I've tried to rely on that dirt pile to save me and then get saboed straight through it. So. Not doing that today. You just gotta dodge a little bit more. My guys are a little slow. I think I might have forgot to turn their max speed up. Treat this like Demon Souls, okay? You're heavy spec right now. You're heavy spec. Hey, man. <laughs> Julius, we did not get any, any AI improvements, I don't think. I think there was very small changes to the voice tree, but um, yeah. each month we only get one bag of candy to give you, and um, all the candy was <laughs> helicopters and BMPs this time. It's true. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't think we can stress enough how limited the man hours are for a team our size and a project this size. You just call it man hours, man. Developer hours. Damn, I don't need it. Where are my guys? Yeah. Even Their though we're... will come with the, the freaking uh, BRD. Yes, we have uh, a bunch of variants of that thing. What will come Even with what? Uh, Leo okay. 1. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the optic on the Leo 1 is very tricky. Um, we're still needing to prototype a few things with that to make sure that it's actually usable because the way it works in reality is that it relies... If you've ever played VR and you've seen a cursor in VR space and you can tell how far away from you it is, like in depth into the scene, how far away something is from your eyeballs, that's kind of how the Leopard 1 sight works. and. Doing that on one screen is sort of impossible. We're going to have to do some fakery to make it look kind of usable. No, the Leo one did not. Well, it had a backup coincidence rangefinder. It had uh, the main method of sighting in was uh, stereoscopic. We've got coincidence rangefinders working because that can be done in a monocular just fine. But um, stereoscopic is another story. 
There we go. The yay. That was the other part of that um, joke effect. Oh god, the martyr. Okay, the martyr is easily the strangest in terms of optics that we will probably ever produce in the whole game. Um, that's gonna need a rewrite of some of our optical systems to make it work. We could do the Marta A1 minus, I think it was called. There was a program they did called AWS Camps for Stark Giggling or something, and um, they put uh, they put thermal images on them, but they were not like they were. So the the, the resolution on the thermal imager on a Marta is 100 by 100 pixels raster, and the update rate was one hertz. So um, that's going to be interesting. Hertz meaning one per second, and also how it feels to use the martyrs' thermals. Yes. The uh, the way they got around the one FPS thing is um, they actually mixed it. It was uh, sensor fusion technically before sensor fusion was cool. We've got all the documentation on this one. I managed to find everything, um, including the procurement process. So they couldn't get proper um, uh, WBG, yeah, Varma Builder, whatever it's called, Kapat. Um, they had to get these crappier thermal images and they would mix them with the intensifier scope so you'd have the green image like a you know like what the um, m60a1 or whatever has but they would actually project a red version of the of the thermal dot onto that so you'd have green for just night vision and then red one hertz dots appearing where there was something warm very very weird and uh it's going to take a lot of tech kookery to to get that working the reason why is they had no effective mount for the proper WBG system that was on uh, later martyrs and leopards and all that kind of thing. And also they just, uh, they didn't have their, um, they couldn't build enough of them to refit all the martyrs. By the way, what I was doing a minute ago was looking at the map so I can see how far away this stuff is. There's no laser rangefinder on this. I recommend looking at the map when using uh, the packed vehicles. Besides the T-72, which has a laser rangefinder. By the way, I notice a lot of people who play the T-72 don't uh, read the gunnery guide, so they don't know that you are supposed to aim the laser with the little red ring, and then aim the gun with the chevron reticle. If you try to laze with the reticle, and you're set over zero already, it will result in a very wrong laser range, which can cause you to fire over your targets frequently. The red ring is also not in the same spot for every tank. Yeah. Uh, in That's real just, life, uh... it is a separate assembly that can shift on its own. It doesn't usually shift as badly as it does in the game, but it's kind of a... Uh, what's the word? Verisimilitude? Like, it, it kind of represents what's really going on, but maybe a little exaggerated. It's just Russian UX, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it's a cool idea if they recognize that the way, it was, the way it was built could allow things to shift around if the tank got beat up, and then they made the indicator actually synchronized to that, so you'd at least know. That's, uh, that's pretty clever, I think. All the American stuff has to be like completely tuned and properly aligned and everything so that the the gun sight reticle is always where the laser is aiming. And uh, if that got thrown off, you wouldn't have any way to tell, as far as I know. But anyway. That's some uh, commentary about how a lot of people don't know how to use the lead either. And that's, to be honest, we, we've been struggling with that for like what a year plus now of this problem of how to get people to read the instructions and realistically like i don't i don't think it's like really fair to disdain them for not reading the thing most games you can fire it up and just play it this mm -hmm. has a little bit of kooky stuff that you just 
you kind of it's really really hard to actually teach people how to play the game from within the game um so we've done the the gunnery guides and all that kind of thing and uh and i made a little video versions of it but at the end of the day um it's gonna have to be just like help people when they don't know what they're doing i think like if everyone can chip in a little bit if someone's obviously like missing all the time just like let them know how it works because uh, we can't get to everyone sometimes we can we can put the information in like 10 places and people sometimes will still miss it yeah we try our best to have every, every useful guide or link placed in, in like the places where it seems people would look for it and uh it turns out a lot of people just don't look for it so stop wasting yeah that's your the conquers. thing right there's there's certain weird ux things that we're just we can't really compromise on because they're the meat and potatoes of the game right like the mm -hmm. yeah that's what makes it what it is and um if that feels weird to people it's like the mouse same thing a lot of people they come in and they're like oh i don't like the way the mouse works and it's like basically the only answer is keep playing and you'll figure out why you need it to be that way yeah it's kind of like uh if you were to play dcs for the first time and say boy i really don't like having to um click my mfds to set up the weapons to do my attack run can't you just do like a a one button lock on and fire like war thunder um you would probably get left out of the the room the uh, dcs community so we, we don't we don't like to laugh people out of the room but there is uh there's a certain vibe and a certain complexity that we go for we try to simplify most of the time but there's certain corners that shouldn't be cut in our opinion it's not like we don't compromise on certain things for accessibility but yeah, like you guys are saying, it's core to the experience of working with these things. I kind of think things like manual gearbox could be cool if we ever do, like, like when we've got multi-crew, that kind of thing might make more sense, but considering it's like you're playing the gunner and the driver and kind of the TC in a way and swapping back and forth, it sort of makes sense to just focus on the interesting parts of the systems, like, um, the, the weaponry and the optics are kind of the they're kind of what defines the era I suppose and if showcasing that is really showcasing what's interesting about this setting oh hey planes you're about to get bombed I am about to get bombed watch these guys now watch us drive why are they flying in all wacky directions man the how many, player would never do that. How many wacky directions uh, are there in the sky? All the DCS player would literally never do that because they don't have enough four. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't care. Uh oh, I'm about to get wrecked actually. That looked like a, oh God. an angry oh pickle. God. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I I think they just wiped my platoon. That's, um, that will be an obstacle to my mission completion. I'm not going to be able to conquer the Cobra now, because I'm out of missile carriers. You can save it. Oh, is that my guy? It yes, is. the red. I get that it's kind of like, like dunking on the, um, on the people who don't read. It's like, it's fun, but it's also sort of like, we want to lead them to the light, you know, like that's kind of one of the things that we sort of try to do differently to other sims. We don't want to be like, not just an actual sim, but like as a community, it would be better if we don't sort of just say, well, maybe you just suck. Even if the answer is that they just suck and haven't tried enough, it's sort of like good to show them the way a little bit, I guess. Yeah. There's no point Mon in being Calvin. elitist. We got a question if Mon Kalb and Galcom are involved. It's not exactly. Um, we asked them questions. Uh, we talked to them and we know them. But um, they haven't made anything for our game and we haven't made anything for theirs. There is another game that we're sort of collaborating with. But, um, well, that's more on that later. Huh? Uh, we have a friendly professional relationship with many of the other sims out there. Which is cool. Very. Moving vehicles will remain WASD, or will there be more realistic commands like giving orders to the drivers for 
quarter speed, stuff like that. That remains to be seen. I would expect the primary way of moving a vehicle to stay WASD. Yeah. I could probably do a waypoint system at some point, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Like there's a plans. Set your guy to drive and just do the gunnery. That kind of maybe makes sense. There are many things planned. Among Us there collab coming. Oh damn, he guessed. You got it. Uh oh. Your tracks are wrecked, man. You got both of them, jeez. He just knocked out your feet, you can do this. Oh! Just deleted him, man. It was erased. Screw you guys. Get him, Josh. That's a nice one-liner action hit. We need Roblox oof when that happens, man. <laughs> oof. <laughs> All right, well, time to... Oh, main gun barrel damage. Damn, they are really taking us to pieces in this one. Oh, no. Oh, no. You got this. Yeah, I think you spoke too soon. Oh, and there's more phantoms. I would say this is a... This is a bad time. I can't do anything about the phantoms. Wilcox, well, really do you times? mean a 113 toe is in a 113 with just a toe planted on it? Because the, there's like the... Oh, what is it called? Toe under armor or something. We're, we're doing an eye toe. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, M901. ITV. That's what it's called. We're doing, uh, we're doing Wally. -E. I don't think we're gonna do the, um, toe on a box thing. I think that's more of a Canada thing. We do NATO have... <laughs> oh, nice. We Thank might you. do Dragon on a, on a box. That would be pretty based. I've heard Dragon is the best one. From what you guys have told me, so well, it's called Dragon, so it's like you know. Yeah, like can't even get behind or get past that name right there. Come on. S P A A, it's not planned. That's a correct answer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it'll never happen, but it's not planned. I think it's pretty likely that eventually we'd have something. But yeah. But the... Harry is correct. I mean, yeah. In case you guys are picturing like, oh, one day you'll be able to play as a Shulka, uh, SPAA controls are much different from tank and IFV controls. It's like you, you're sitting behind a bank of uh, scopes and switches and stuff, and you see some pulses on a screen, and you're like, yep, that's the plane. And then you hit a button to fire based on your lock that you receive yeah. from the radio net from the command BTR or whatever. It's, Definitely uh... go and play Samson because it'll give you an impression of like, I mean, it's fun, but it's a definitely a different kind of fun. Yeah, it's not like uh, War Thunder SPAA where you see like you're looking through your scope and you see your lead mark and brrr, you know that's uh, that's almost entirely fiction. I think there's a direct gunnery mode in the Shilka, but it's not used for planes like that. The Vulcan does, they do do direct gunnery, but it pretty much uh, plays kind of like an Abrams, I guess. In terms of like lead and everything. Yeah. Interesting bit of history about this Cobra. This is the updated version of the AH-1Q, which itself is the updated version of the AH-1G with um, tow missiles added. Although I think this one only has hydras on it. Yeah, this is a, an alternate loadout. Where's the ones that screwed everybody up at the end? Um, but yeah, the, the AH-1S mod... We should ask the audience if they know what the hell's going on with the naming of Cobras because um, 
it's a <laughs> rabbit hole. Yeah, it's it's quite involved. They upgraded the AH one Q to uh what was it, increase the engine power? Or was yeah. it uh yeah. And and so they called it AH one S mod. And then a few years later they realized that was kind of a needlessly complex name, so they just changed it to AH one S. And they also started making uh, new airframes with the angular cockpit, like the flat panel one. And those were also called AH1S, but they had a different subtitle. That was and, prod, because they were produced yeah, as yeah. an AH1S rather than up, up being from And then AH1Q. there was a third one, a third type of AH1S designation as well. Um, yeah, that's. I think that was the one that had the, I think that had the chain gun. Yeah. On the, on the chin. So that's why if you Google AH1S, you'll see like the Japanese one with the anime girl on the side. Um, that is technically an AH1S, licensed produced in Japan, but it's like the modern version or the more modern version of an AH1S. This is the original. I think the is... third one was e ECAS or something, ECA. Yeah, that sounds maybe. right. I think that's correct. And then they all got homogenized to AH1S in yeah. 87, 80. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so this is like early lore Cobra. This is like the mo the most advanced tow Cobra at the time, but it still has the old cockpit and it's basically an upgraded AH1Q. It's got the it's, uh, boy, man. it's got the exhaust shield on it too, which is kind of neat. And now Tree Guy found one in Australia of all places. Yeah. He um he found one on a on a in a museum I think that was I guess donated by the Yankees and uh, he went and scanned it yep 3D scans are uh, very good to have when we can get them the way we use 3D scans I know I've covered this before but very quickly uh, rehash we uh, we don't make game models directly off of 3D scans we use 3D scans as kind of a, a reference or a thing to trace off of for the shape so that we know we got everything more or less correct if you look at drawings blueprints that kind of stuff they're usually wrong. They're kind of like unofficial fan-made stuff. And if you look at photos, the uh, field of view and the angle and everything, it's usually not perfect for reference. You usually have to kind of uh, mess around with it and try to guess at certain things. So if you get a 3D scan, that's the only truly reliable way, aside from like a factory blueprint, to make sure that you have the shape and size of everything correct we get a good 3D scan, we can be assured that our game model that we make using it as a reference will be accurate. And that's very nice. Uh, you guys can also help uh, if you have Cold War vehicles that we don't have yet uh, in your area. Make sure you have permission to photograph them. If you send a walk around that's done in a, a way compatible with photogrammetry, we can use that as a reference to help in the art process. And there's um, more information about that on our Discord server in the 3D Scan channel. Just after one. It is after one. Okay, so what we do on stream days is uh, the hour after the stream. The stream is one hour, so we're done now. The hour after the stream is the Patreon Q&A. Uh, if you are supporting the game on Patreon, you get to directly interact with us once a month, even on months that we don't have a Twitch stream, and uh, see some early previews, ask questions, get answers, just hang out. It's a cool time. So we're going to uh, wrap things up here for now, and we're going to go do that. The VOD of this stream is going to be uploaded to YouTube. Usually that's when it, within about two days, and then it gets chapter annotations and stuff. Uh, if you want to see past streams, you can always go on the Gunner Heat PC YouTube channel and look at them there. They're all annotated and organized as much as you can organize an hour of random Q&A. So, uh, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. It's always uh, a good time. And we look forward to the future updates. If you want to support the project, uh, Patreon is cool, buying the game on Steam is cool. And, uh, yeah, we always do our best, and that's all we can do. Happy April Fools. Bye.